gee, it's almost Thanksgiving, and I've got so much to be thankful for. I've got a wonderful wife, two wonderful kids, and an adorable personality. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Bill Harris Alice Faye Show. Here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, transcribed, written by Ed James, Ray Brenner, and Frank Gold, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, John Hubbard, Janine Roos, and Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Tonight's little saga is called The Birthday Gift, or Never Mind the Present, Mother, I'll Settle for Your Past. First, here's a word from RCA Victor. <laughs> of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. There's an old army saying that there are three ways of doing everything, the right way, the wrong way, and the army way. There is, however, an additional way, the Phil Harris or weird way. If you need any convincing, tonight ought to do it. There once was a birdie at Sunset and Vine Singing Harris, Phil Harris, Phil Harris <laughs> And we both agreed there was none so divine As Harris, Phil Harris, Phil Harris You're adorable, simply divine, you lover Oh, good morning, Alice mm, Well, see you later Wait a minute Hold it, Clyde You missed me by two feet I did well, I kissed something. You sure did. You kissed a luscious, adorable, wet mop. <laughs> oh, is that what it was? Well, we better get a new mop. That one will never be the same. <laughs> okay, pucker up, Mama. Here comes the super chief on track 29. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if your bridge club meets this afternoon, share that amongst them. <laughs> Phil, where are you going? Oh, honey, Elliot's waiting in the living room. He wants to talk to me. Oh, you and that Elliot. Wait a minute. What's the matter with Elliot? Well, nothing, except that he comes up with the world's craziest ideas, and you think they're wonderful. Honey, I like don't... The, like the time you bought the iron farm. <laughs> <laughs> that was a deal. Who ever heard of raising iron on a farm? Pig iron? <laughs> Only devote as much time to your family as you do to Ellie. But I, I think about you, honey. I think about you all the time. Only yesterday I said to Elliot, I said, gee, I wonder what Alice and the kids are doing. <laughs> Phil, do you know what tomorrow is? <laughs> do I know what tomorrow is? Honey, how could I be married to a wonderful girl like you and forget our anniversary? It's little Alice's birthday. <laughs> Oh, well, I was close. <laughs> Where is my little image now? Well, she's in her room. Okay, you just tell her to put her things on because I'll take her down to the department store and she can pick out anything she wants. How's that? Well, all right. And Phil? Yes, honey? Don't let Elliot sell you any cork swimming pools for light-headed people. <laughs> Honey, get little Alice something useful, huh? Okay, okay Something useful Now, what is useful to a 14-year-old girl? 14-year-old scotch? No <laughs> Guys, little Alice is 14 years old That makes me... Oh, what a horrible thought <laughs> Hi, Curly, what took you so long? Hey, would you believe it, Elliot? Oh, no kidding, you look older. <laughs> Maybe it's because you're worried. Little Alice, little Alice. Tomorrow's little Alice's birthday, and I'm going to take her shopping for a present. She's 14 years but old. But I haven't talked to you about this idea. Look, this... Elliot, I don't want no cork swimming pools for light-headed people. What? You and them pig farms. 
You get me into nothing but trouble with Alice. <laughs> Now, look, this is serious. So's a million bucks. Look, I promised Alice I wouldn't even listen to any of your crazy ideas, so you might as well get... A million bucks? <laughs> Easy a million. Maybe even three million. I'll listen with one ear. Go ahead. <laughs> Curly, I got a 300-year-old treasure map of the Solomon Islands. <laughs> Elliot, I ain't going for that... Buried treasure routine. It ain't buried treasure, Curly. This map shows the exact spot where a barrel of uranium fell off a Chinese galleon 300 years ago. <laughs> uranium, huh? Wait a minute. Take it easy, Roy. Nobody knew about a uranium 300 years ago. The Chinese did. Well, why didn't they say something? They did. But who understands Chinese? <laughs> yeah. 300 years old, huh? Mm-hmm. How you know? Well, look. Down here in the corner where the guy signed it. Joe Fung. I drew this map 300 years ago. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it looks authentic. Yeah, it looks all right. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. What? How did you get it? From a deep sea diver. His grandfather used to run a dive for Joe Fong. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot. Sir? Now hold it just a minute. Look right at me. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now look. Why don't the deep sea diver go after it himself. See? That's easy, Curly. He's a deep, deep, deep sea diver. <laughs> He's a deep, deep sea diver. <laughs> the uranium's in shallow water. Shallow water, huh? And he don't have a deep-sea, shallow water diving helmet. <laughs> I got news for you, neither do we. <laughs> Curly, it's simple. We go into a department store, you order a couple of deep-sea, shallow water diving helmets, and we're in business. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know about that. Look, if we come home carrying a pair of deep-sea, shallow water diving helmets, Alice might get suspicious. <laughs> so we don't carry them. We wear them. <laughs> Well, what if she notices them anyway? She won't, Curly. We'll keep our hats on. <laughs> Look, it's no good, Elliot. Alice will murder me for going in on another deal with you. Even if it is a wonderful deal like this one. I like the deal, but she ain't gonna allow it. That's a shame. That's what it is. Five million bucks right down the drain. Right. I could sure use five million bucks. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You have to buy little Alice a birthday present, don't you? Well, buy her a pair of deep-sea, shallow-water diving helmets, and we can borrow them from her. Elliot, I told her she could have anything she wanted. Now, give me one reason why a fourth pair of deep-sea, shallow-water diving helmets. She's afraid of mosquitoes? Elliot. <laughs> I got it, Curly. I got it. Man, what a crazy shower cap. And you'll have two of them. Yeah. His and hers. <laughs> Hey, we're in the living room, honey. I'm ready to leave, Dad. Oh, hello, Uncle Elliot. Hi, little Alice. Phil, don't let Alice pick out anything ridiculous. Please. You know me, honey. Sure. But don't let her pick out anything ridiculous anyway. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, we sort of have a couple of ideas, huh, Curly? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Elliot, let's get moving. Yeah, vast be hearties, man the poop deck and shiver the timbers. So long, Mom. See you later. Goodbye, honey. Bye, Alice. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Everybody's got somebody. And all I've got is Phil Harris. <laughs> keep it gay, keep it light. Keep it fresh, keep it fair. Let it bloom every night. Give it room, give it air. Keep your love, lovely dreams. 
never wake it. Make it happy and be happy as you make it. Let it sing like a nightingale and may keep it gay. Keep it free or you'll frighten it away. Take it easy and enjoy it while you take it. Keep it gay, keep it gay, keep it gay. Keep it gay, keep it light, keep it fresh, keep it fair. Let it bloom every night, give it room, give it air. Keep your love a lovely dream and never wake it. Make it happy and be happy as you make it. Let it sing like a nightingale in May. Keep it gay, keep it free or you'll frighten it away. at this department. Look yeah. at that diving equipment. Huh? I don't see anything down here for me. What do you mean? There's diving helmets and elephant rifles? Wait a minute. I'll wait. <laughs> Just hold it a minute, will you? All right. Look, Alice, why don't you sort of shop around for a while? You mean by myself? Sure. You're a big girl. Go around to the toy department or someplace. We'll pick you up later. Oh, boy, am I going to have fun. What'd you send her away for, Curly? I had to, Elliot. We can't let her find out we want the diving helmets for us. You know I never thought of that. You're a shrewd one. <laughs> Can I help you, uh... <laughs> gentlemen? Uh, yeah, we want to see a couple of deep-sea shallow water diving helmets. Yeah, uh, size seven and a fifth. Uh, <laughs> that's the size I wear. I know no, the li- li- See, They I only come in three sizes. Small, medium, and large. It's going to be another one of those days. <laughs> Step this way, gentlemen. Don't do it, Curly. Walk the way we always do. I'm going to. <laughs> uh, here's a lovely model used uh, by some of our very best divers. It's shockproof, moisture-proof, anti-magnetic, and comes with a full guarantee. Hey, if you care to try it out, we have a 10-foot tank for that very purpose. <laughs> Sounds all right, huh, Curly? Wait a minute, I don't know. Hey, mister, uh, how long is the guarantee? It's guaranteed for a lifetime. <laughs> or three weeks, whichever is shorter. <laughs> three weeks? Uh, Curly, what difference does it make? With the map, all we need is three minutes. I don't know, Elliot. Three weeks. Uh, perhaps if you gentlemen were to tell me what you intend diving for... Oh, uh, no, you Ah, oh, get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> this is the secret, buddy, and we ain't telling nobody. Yeah, but all I ask... Go on. <laughs> Yeah, make like a robin, will you, Heathcliff? Let's move it, move it. Get lost. Well, I've never been treated so rudely in my life. But never in my entire life. Never! (laughs) Poking into our uranium. How about that? Oh, how about it? I wouldn't be surprised if he was a Russian spy. (laughs) We'll do this ourselves, huh? Right. Okay, Elliot. There it is. Slip it on. Why? The diving helmet. We have to see if it leaks, don't we? Uh, look, Curly, you know how I am with water. Elliot, there's nothing to be scared of about water. People even drink it. (laughs) They do? Practically every day. Look, Curly, this is a two-man operation. One guy gets into the tank with the helmet, and one guy pumps on the air pump. Right? Right. I'll I'll pump. pump. 
Look, Ellie. <laughs> I said it first. It was a tie. I got an idea. We both pump. Okay, let's go. All right, I'll take this side. You ready? Wait a minute. Hold everything. Now what's the matter? If we both pump, who's in the helmet? We ought to get somebody. Well, if it ain't the happiness boys. Cupid and stupid. <laughs> well, Julius Abruzio, the Florence Chadwick of the bathtub set. <laughs> what are you doing down there? I'm window shopping. Me father needs a new window. <laughs> Put on diving helmets, huh? Pretty nifty, huh, Julius? With faces like yours, you should have put on diving helmets years ago. <laughs> now, wait a minute, you little... Hold clown. it, Elliot, hold it. I'll handle this. Just a minute. Mm. Julius, how would you like to put on this deep-sea, shallow-water diving helmet and test it in that tank of water? It only weighs 50 pounds. You want I should put this 50-pound helmet on me 60-pound little body and jump into 10 feet of water? <laughs> That's all. I got a better idea. Why don't you take me down to the river, tie a rock around me neck, and throw me in? <laughs> Julius, will you listen to me a minute? What we're doing is going to help the government. You're going to turn in your citizenship papers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Julius, no. The government needs uranium. That's why we want you to test the diving helmet. You're going to go diving in uranium? <laughs> For uranium. For the government. And Twelve million dollars. The government, huh? You mean the United States government? That's right, Julius. Your government. Yours and mine. Now, you're not going to let them down, are you? Why don't you test the helmet? <laughs> We've got physical reasons. We're cowards. Ellie. <laughs> well, I ain't no coward. I'll do it. You'll do it? That's a good boy. Put the helmet on him, Elliot. Roger. I'll do it for the government. The government of the people, by the people, for the people, and fellas. What's the matter? It's hot in here. <laughs> We'll cool you off in a minute. Yeah, you ready, Elliot? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, toss them in. One, two... Fellas, wait a minute, I've changed my mind. Let's negotiate. Three. Mr. Harris, start pumping. I can't breathe. No! Okay, let's pump, Elliot. Pump it in, Captain. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Are we going to have a time... Good over them islands, huh? Good. Hot and cold running pineapple juice. <laughs> Hot and cold running hula girls. <laughs> Wait a minute. Running hula girls? It's okay, Curly. We're chasing them. Oh. Wow. <laughs> How is the pump? Oh, yeah, yeah, the pump, Elliot. Oh, yeah. Hey, Elliot. Yeah, Curly. <laughs> hey, uh, what happens over them islands if, uh, Man's liable to run a little thirsty, you know, get a little thirsty. Oh, 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 did I tell you about that? <laughs> no, no. They got spigots in the trees. <laughs> Fermented coconut juice. No. Yeah. Oh, man, let me see that map again. Yeah, look. Oh, beautiful. Alex, I can't breathe. We're going to live, Curly, but live. I'm going to die, fellas, but die. <laughs> hey, Elliot, how come we never thought of taking that trip before? Alex! Think of it, Curly. The soft music of Polynesian guitar. Ah! I can almost hear them. <laughs> the wind whistling through the stately palms, surf pounding on the sandy shore, and from the mysterious jungle. <laughs> Weird, ain't it? Sounds almost human. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. Do you know something, Elliot? I think that guy's trying to sell us a defective helmet. Huh? <laughs> How come? Well, look at it. It's turning green. Uh. <laughs> yeah. It's practically purple. Hey, hey, wait a minute. It ain't the helmet. It's Julius. Uh. <laughs> you know he looks better in Technicolor? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh-oh. You better get him out of there. He's going to ruin that whole tank. Oh, that kitten spoils everything. Yeah. Okay, grab him. Get his other arm, Ellie. Yeah, I got him, Curly. All right. Wave him out. Get him out. That's right. it. That's it. Now, just lower him easy. <laughs> Slippery little devil, eh? <laughs> okay, take the helmet off. Yeah, okay. They got me. We both tell Miss Faith, me and me father, you might have a yes, you drowned You know, Curly, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a quitter. <laughs> What's up, Elliot? I've that? been thinking. We ain't never going to get away with this diving helmet bit. We're not going to get away with it with Little Alice or Big Alice. Where? Skin divers outfit. They use those things for diving in shallow water. You get goggles and an oxygen tank and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that seems more logical. Yeah. I'll tell you what. You find Little Alice and I'll meet you here. Where are you going, Curly? I want to stop into that music department over there for a second. Yeah, okay, Curly. I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Yeah, right Oh. Good day, sir. Can I be of assistance? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'd like to hear, uh, an RCA Victor record or two. Fine. May I suggest Toscanini's The Pines and Fountains of Rome? It's one of our leading sellers. Well, um, I was thinking more of a vocal selection. All right. How about this album? Mario Lanza sings Christmas songs. He's, um, a tenor. And I was thinking of, of something, uh, a little deeper. Well, why don't we look at the list? Now, let's see here, um, Eddie Arnold, Perry Como, Eddie Fisher. You're getting closer. Tony Martin, Vaughn Monroe. You went past it. <laughs> Back up to the H's. The H's, all right. There's... You certainly don't want to hear Phil Harris. Why don't I? Hear the taste some people have. <laughs> Gee whiz, what you got to go through to hear one little record. And I sing with delight As I spend most the night Neat that billowy ocean with you Last night I dreamed that I was down in the bottom of the sea Down in that salty water I met a maiden fair who had a cottage there Of course she didn't have it in her own name But anyway we had it And she had a tail of a fish for a train But whoa, Clyde, whoa how that gal could entertain. And what a time I had with Minnie, the mermaid, down in the bottom of the sea. I lost all my troubles in amongst the bubbles, but she was just as sweet as she could be. And every night when the starfish came out, I hugged and kissed her so. Oh, oh what a time I had with Minnie, the mermaid, down in her seaweed bungalow. Low, down in her seaweed bungalow. Ouch, what a time I had with Minnie, the mermaid, down in the bottom of the sea. I lost all my morals and amongst the corals that Minnie made the sucker out of me. And every night when the starfish came out, I hugged and kissed her so. Oh, wow, what a time I had with Minnie, the mermaid, down in her seaweed bungalow. Low, down in her seaweed bungalow Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep So beware I'm over here, Elliot, little Alice. Okay. Over here. Janet, I'm just what I want. It's beautiful. Well, well, we got a few things picked out ourselves for you, baby Alice. Haven't we, Elliot? You said it, Curly. It's so sheer and, and slinky. Sheer and slinky? What is? This black lace negligee. And it's... Wait a minute. 
Hold it. You don't want no black lace negligee. You're only 14 years old. Wouldn't you rather have a nice match set of oxygen tanks? <laughs> what? are the latest thing, Alice. You said I could have anything I wanted. Now, wait a minute. Your mother said it had to be useful. And what could be more useful in Los Angeles than an oxygen tank? <laughs> Negligee. Alice, can you filter smog through a negligee? <laughs> of course not. Put her down for two tanks, Curly. Right. And look at these, Alice. Just look at these. Ain't they beautiful? I don't want any swim fins. I want a black lace negligee. Alice, you've got to stop being unreasonable. You need swim fins. <laughs> you know the rainy season is coming up. <laughs> And when all them other kids are sloshing through puddles in their ridiculous-looking shoes... You'll be racing past them in fins. <laughs> I want a black lace negligee. Tell her about the goggles. Oh, oh about the goggles. Hey, honey, you're gonna love this. Look, honey, they're great big goggles. Cover practically your whole face. You won't ever have to wash. <laughs> I don't want goggles. I and want... you get a spear. A genuine, retractable, ballpoint spear. <laughs> hey, you'll love it, honey. I don't want a spear. I'll look funny walking around with a spear. No, you won't, Alice. I used to know a guy had a spear sticking right out of his forehead and nobody even noticed it. <laughs> Elliot. Hmm? Let's not go overboard. <laughs> That's a fact, Curly. He was a nearsighted flute player, and he had to have a place to hang his music. Oh, right. <laughs> Look, baby Alice, I want... I want a black lace negligee. Phil? Oh, Phil? Curly, it's Alice. Uh-oh, now it's coming. We're over here, honey. I don't want oxygen tanks and swim fins and spears. Alice, please. I'm only a little girl, and I want a black lace negligee. <laughs> Phil, Phil, Julius told me you were here. What on earth did you do to him? Do to Julius? Oh, yes. Us? We wouldn't hurt a feather on Julius' dear little head. No. Well, I don't know. Mr. Bruzio called and he's furious. He said you got Julius soaking wet. Honey, he's exaggerating. Well, that's the last time we'll do any favors for that little fink. That's right. Mother, I don't want an oxygen tank. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we were only kidding her, honey. Yeah. We were trying to... You know to... us. Yeah. Always making jokes. Yeah, we they wanted to buy me a spear. <laughs> oh, Phil. Now, wait a minute. Oh, honey. We... <laughs> Look, now, I got her present all picked out. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's practical, too. What did you get her? A subscription to Esquire? <laughs> oh, honey. I'm a father, and I know what's good for a 14-year-old girl. I got her um, um, uh, a black lace negligee. Oh. Dad! Yeah. This is Phil again, folks. It's estimated that by 1956... There will be some seven million more children in elementary schools than there are now. We must start preparing at once. More equipment will be needed like textbooks, playgrounds, and above all, more elementary school teachers. So do your part to assure your child a proper education by joining and working with local groups and school boards. Thanks and good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Included in this program transcribed was Frank Nelson. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. This has been an NBC Radio Network production. <laughs> <laughs>